Today, we're going to learn how to use the batch scanner, the PowerSlide 5000, which will scan up to 50 slides at a time, or it will scan individual slides one at a time. It has some great correction features such as Magic Touch, which removes dust and scratches, auto color, and many other features. Some things to know before you begin. This process does take time. It can take three to five minutes per slide. A batch of 50 slides can take three or more hours, including the time spent cleaning the slide. Let's look at some of the things that increase either the time or the size of file. Increasing resolution is the most significant effect. Also, scanning in TIFF as opposed to JPEG has a very significant effect. Choosing some of the other enhancement features has some effect, but not as much as the first two mentioned. I scanned the same slide twice, once as a TIFF at 5000 dpi and once as a JPEG at 5000 dpi. You can see the size of the TIFF was enormous, 27.5 megabytes as compared to 2.8 megabytes of the JPEG. Since I don't have the capability of storing that many large files, I scan mine as JPEGs and then make um, corrections or alterations on the copy of the JPEGs. Some physical considerations about the scanner. First, you turn it on by the small switch on the bottom left corner. And the second thing to consider is make sure the machine has room to operate. The slide arm will be going in and out. You don't want anything on the table to obstruct that. And as you load the cartridge, from the left side, you will need uh, no obstructions on the table on the left or the right side. I personally feel it's best to clean your slides before you begin. Um, we've been told by the Kodak rep not to use canned air to clean the slides as it leaves a residue on them. At the uh, student desk, there is a, a bulb that you squeeze and it pushes air and then you can brush it off. And these are sold at photography stores also, and these are recommended for cleaning. I personally use a big, soft brush to clean the slides. Once your slides are cleaned and the machine is positioned, it's time to approach the machine and get started. The first thing you want to do is insert your thumb drive. And the next thing you want to do is prepare a folder on your thumb drive for your scans, or you can just dump them right into the thumb drive. If you want to view the slides as they are scanned, use Windows Explorer to open the folder you prepared on your thumb drive. You do this by hitting the Windows E key, and that will open an Explorer window. In that window, you browse to the scan folder that you set up, and once it's opened up in the upper right-hand corner, you choose the viewing option as a large icon uh, by clicking the drop-down menu and selecting large icon. You resize that window and move it to the bottom of the screen. And once you've done that, you open your CyberView software by double-clicking on it on the desktop. On the front of the machine on the right side is a small screen that's backlit. And this is a preview window that will allow you to see your slide before loading it. You place the slide in the window and push down on it and the backlight will appear allowing you to see the slide. Let's look at how to load the magazine for batch scanning. First thing you want to do is make sure the numbers are on the top and the open side of the magazine is towards the left. That's where you insert the slides. We have been having trouble um, with the scanner picking up the first slide so we're loading until we resolve that problem we're loading the magazine starting with the second slot and you load the slides by placing the emulsion side or screen side towards the front of the magazine and the slide upside down this will make the slide number on the back of the slider facing you as you load before you insert the magazine into the uh, machine, make sure this, the slide arm is pushed in. Once the magazine has been loaded, insert it into the machine as shown, gently pushing it forward until you hear a click, and it will partly de depress the black sensor shown.
following window appears when you first open the CyberView software. The first thing you want to do is select this picture icon on the left and from the drop down menu choose positive for slides. This thumbnail panel will appear but it only shows the th slide thumbnails if you pre-scan them and we're not going to do this as it adds considerable time and it's used only if you plan to treat certain slides individually and again we're doing batch scanning. The next menu item you want to select is the text menu bar scan, the first item. You click on this item and it will bring down a drop down menu and from there you select preferences positive. Again you select positive a second time and the window shown on the next slide will appear once you've done that. This window contains four tabs up at the top. The only two that we will be working with for our purposes are the first one, Scan Setting, and the last one, Magic Touch Auto Color. We'll look at each of these individually. There are many choices to be made on the Scan Setting tab. The first questions ask you about pre-scan options, and we're not going to pre-scan, so we won't worry about this, this field. The first one that we will deal with is regarding where you're going to store your scanned slides. And you click on the Browse button and go to the folder that you created or your thumb drive. Otherwise, it will just store in your BYU account. And once you've uh, browsed this location, the path name will appear in this box. The second choice you'll be making will be giving your slides a name, a prefix name. And for this batch, I chose Vacation 2001. The next choice will be the number of digits in your slide number. And this is based on however many slides you have. The default is three, so you can change that if you like. The next choice is you can choose a custom number to start with. Now this would be, for instance, if you scanned 50 slides the day before and came in the next day and you wanted to start at 51, otherwise you'll get the default from the computer. And you want to make sure that if you don't change that, that it doesn't write over one of your existing slides with the same number. The next choice is file type. This is where you will choose TIFF or JPEG, realizing that a TIFF file is very large. If you choose JPEG, you then have that next option to choose the compression of the JPEG. I usually choose 100, which doesn't compress the JPEG at all and gives you the best quality file. Then right here it shows a sample of what your slide name will look like with the prefix name you've given it and the number with the number of digits you've specified. There are two of the tabs that we won't be addressing in this presentation. One is the default scanning area. If we just leave this at the default, it will handle our slides fine. And the other one is the advanced setting. Now, there are some things in the advanced setting that if you want to uh, play with, you can. Those include auto exposure, which is good, auto balance, auto contrast, and digital noise reduction. The next tab that we'll look at is the Magic Touch Auto Color tab. The Magic Touch Auto Color tab is very easy to deal with. There are only two checkboxes, and I generally check them both Magic Touch and Auto Color. Once you have dealt with these checkboxes, click the OK button at the bottom of this, the window and the Active Frame Setting window will come up and we'll deal with this on the next slide. In the Active Frame Setting window which pops up, you can choose your resolution and I usually choose 2500. Uh, 5,000 takes a lot more time, and if I want to do one at 5,000, I'll do it individually later. Next, you can choose your color depth. I usually choose 16-bit because it allows a broader, fuller color depth. Next, you, use the, you can choose the quality of your scan, the scan mode, and I usually do choose the highest one, which is quality. I don't deal with apply to all or advance. Apply to all because of the parameters we've already chosen. They will apply to all of them. 
Once we've dealt with the tab choices, we're going to start working with the icons on the menu bar. And the first one is the first slide position icon. And this tells you where your first slide is located in the magazine. And since we've had some trouble with this uh, magazine scanning the first slide, we are going to put a 2 in here so it will begin scanning at the second slide. The next icon we're going to choose is the Start Scan icon. And once we select this, there's a drop-down menu. And since we're doing batch scanning, we, we select the Multiple Scan to File. And it will bring up a window which tells us how many slides we're scanning. And since we, we started in the second slot, we only have um, 49 slat scans. So we're going to click 1 to 49. So again, this first number is the slot that we begin at. And the second number refers to the total number of slides. And once you click the OK button, the slide scanning process will begin. Here's what your computer screen will look like as you scanned. In the top part of the screen, you'll see a progress gar bar representing each slide as it's scanned. And in the bottom part of the screen, you'll see the window which shows the slides as they're finished scanning. The last thing you need to know is how to remove the cartridge once all activity ceases. When all activity ceases and the scanning is finished, pull out the slide advanced arm as shown above and remove the magazine. To scan slides one at a time, you can use the settings that you've already got if you haven't closed the CyberView software. And if you want, you can also change the resolution if you want a higher resolution. You load the empty cartridge or magazine into the tunnel until it touches the slide transport arm completely. And make sure the slide arm is in the first slot of the magazine. Press the green button on top of the machine, which will pop up the slide holder. Place the slide in the holder as illustrated. The last step is to select the Start Scan icon, and in the drop-down menu, select Scan Current Frame, and this will start the scanning process. Well, there you have it, as easy as one, two, three. Well, maybe one, two, three, four, five, etc. And though it may take a few times before you're comfortable, it's very doable, and what a wonderful option to, rep, uh, to resurrect the wonderful memories held on your slides. So be sure and give the new slide scanner a try. Happy scanning!